segment, we would like to give you more information on finalizing your project blueprint and on badges. Regarding the project blueprint, make sure that your document is shared in the way that is specified on the screen. So make sure that when you share the document, the setting anyone with the link and view is selected. And then to obtain the link, simply click, click on the green icon. Once you have the link, you can submit your project by clicking on the Submit Project link that will be on the top of this page, basically where you come to see the modules. Now, one section in the blueprint um, asks you to describe the project idea. The first two questions in that section are a lot easier to answer if you have an idea of what the driving question for the project will be. One thing that you can do to frame this question, the driving question, is to use a tool that has been created by the Buck Institute for Education that's called Tubrick. This Tubrick tool allows you to create driving questions such as how can we design homes? Now, how can we design homes is a little bit too vague, maybe too broad. So you can qualify um, nouns like that with, for example, energy efficient. That's the one that I chose in this case. And you can also narrow down the question by using a place or a city or some specific um, geographical location associated with the target culture. Now, if you think of a project where an exchange would take place, some sort of telecollaborative exchange, uh, where these concepts would be somehow dealt with and defined, um, the interaction can be really rich. For example, think about questions that come, come up, such as uh, what spaces do we consider essential or non-essential in a home, in our culture? Or how big should those spaces be and why? Or how are concepts such as privacy associated with those spaces. Uh, what furniture is essential in those spaces and why? So questions like this, even though they may look very innocent on the surface, can prompt very interesting discussions and can be the basis for wonderful projects that can result in amazing products and also amazing exchanges if this is set up as a telecollaboration. Now, in terms of the project idea in the blueprint, the next three questions, what will the end product be, who is the audience, and how will the product be presented, um, are going to be a little bit more difficult to define because ideally, you would like to actually negotiate these questions with the students. So we don't expect you to give us the final answers to these questions, but just think about possibilities. Regarding the badge, um, as we mentioned at the beginning, um, those of you who complete the um, online institute uh, requirements, uh, which is basically turning in the blueprint, uh, will receive a badge. The badge is basically an image, like the one that you see to the left, uh, which contains links to three elements. One of those links is uh, a connection to the description page. And that description page is very much the same page you used when you learned about this institute and the one that describes what this institute is about. The criteria page uh, is a page that specifies what you did to obtain the badge. And then the evidence page is basically a link that you will provide to us, uh, which takes people to your blueprint. So your blueprint is basically the evidence that uh, you provide to whoever requests to see the badge that you have complied with the requirements of this institute. The criteria are specified on a page uh, that we made available soon after the institute started. Uh, if you go back to the description page, you will be able to see uh, this page with the uh, criteria. One thing to note here is that point five states that um, you participated in a collegial discussion on topics related to language learning project planning, design, and implementation. Uh, to comply with that requirement, we give you two choices. You can either participate in the discussion or if you're taking this online institute uh, in a self-paced format, uh, you can also request to get feedback from one of your cohort members. The volunteer spot um, groups um, 
are, are, were created with that intention. So that would be the group um, to request feedback from. Once you have your badge, um, we would like you to open a new account in the Open Badges website. This is, of course, voluntary. You don't have to do it. But if you would like to display the badge, um, this is the way that you would like to do it, I think. So uh, once you go to this website, all you have to do is create an account, which is very easy, and then click on Upload a Badge, and you upload the image that we have submitted uh, to you through email. One last point. Uh, when we started the Institute, um, I believe we mentioned that uh, this Institute was thought of as a way to define PBLL, not only as a way to learn about it, but also as a way to uh, bring in people from the profession to help us define what project-based language learning is. We believe that it will be um, uh, ideal if the definition of project-based language learning was made with participation, broad participation of those of you who actually implemented in the classroom. So um, I would like to just remind you that this document is available uh, for you to make comments and it's called From PBL to PBLL and uh, it basically lists the essential requirements in the core document that defines PBL and then on the column to the right, uh, the interpretation of what those requirements would mean in the foreign language classroom.